focused on trying to give him the best performance possible. Dan Brown, the first guy that Pat Hill hired on his staff when he came to Fresno State. Pat Hill in his 12th year has done well in the postseason, especially against BCS automatic qualifying conference teams. Last year he beat Georgia Tech in the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. First year head coach for Colorado State is Steve Fairchild. And he actually coached with Dan Brown right here at this stadium when they were on the New Mexico staff together. Six and six for Fairchild and CSU this year. He won more games at CSU than any other first year head coach in program history. CSU won the toss, they deferred. So Fresno State will receive Jason Smith with the kickoff. And back deep to return is Rashad Evans. And Evans is forced out of bounds after a 22-yard return. So Fresno's senior quarterback, Tom Brandstater, he made a point to say that he's focusing on trying to go out the right way and getting rid of an ugly loss. Of course, that ugly loss was the season finale against Boise State. 46 career touchdown passes with the Bulldogs. A run-oriented team ride. As soon as you say Fresno State football, you get a sense offensively exactly what Pat Hill wants to do. Yeah, you see the lineup at the top of the screen. It's an offense that prefers to run the football first. They're about 29 points a game, a physical style of play for this offense. Anthony Harding starts at running back for the Bulldogs, and he gets the call, and a very good seam for Harding. And Anthony Harding breaks it all the way out to the 49-yard line, a 21-yard pickup, finally taken down by Jake Kalusha. Uh, we talked about the physical style. Two backs, a fullback, get in behind him and then cut off of him. That's exactly what they like to do behind camp, the fullback 48, a power team. This is not going to be a lot of spread them out, hurry up to the line of scrimmage, throw the football. It is two backs, pound away, and then take some shots down the field. Randstater now to throw, and he has it complete to Marlon Moore. Moore was out with ankle injuries earlier this season. Did have a 63-yard punt return for a touchdown against UCLA. They're happy to have him back in the mix. And you see the Colorado State defense at the top of your screen. That's a, a typical 4-3 defense. They've had some trouble against the run this season, and they haven't been particularly good at sacking the quarterback, giving up about 30 points a game, only a few sacks on the season. Only 21. So Fresno Nine. State moving the ball well here. Fresh set of downs. And Ryan Matthews gets the handoff for a pickup of two. Ryan Matthews missed six games with injury. He was the leading the whack in the top ten in the country in rushing and scoring before getting hurt against UCLA. Folks probably remember him for what he did against Rutgers earlier this year, Rob. Yeah, we'll talk about him as the game goes along. But the, the big thing to know with him is that losing him took away big plays from the offense. He was dynamite early on this season. And then out with the injury, and now getting himself back in the mix. Harding back in, and Harding with another big run, breaking free and pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Another 20 yards for Anthony Harding. Let's look at the impact players. Uh, Fresno State offensively, talk about the running backs, but Harding just broke off a big run there. They've picked up 2,000 yards rushing from the tailback spot using three guys. He's a big part of that. And then Shayu Ajir Tutu is the big play receiver from the outside. They'll go to him down the field deep an awful lot. And then they get Devon Wiley back, who was out the last few games with a concussion. He's their quick third down receiver. Harding again on the pitch inside the 10. And a junior from Turlock, California. Taken down by Mike Pegnata. This Colorado State defense has had trouble, as we mentioned, against the run. Number 99 in the country, giving up 185 yards a game, facing a, a powerful running team that likes to line up and go right after you. Lanye Miller now comes in at running back. And Miller just forces his way for a first down. And it'll be first and goal. And you saw Miller just lower the boom there. 
Well, you see also the good job of blocking on the edge. They're running to the tight end side and getting the fullback over there. Camp 48 leading the way. But how about finishing a run? Lanye Miller, 215 pounds, lowering the shoulder and finishing the run. Not being the guy who gets hit, but the guy delivering the blow. Miller stays in here with first and goal. Here he is. Boy, did they make that look easy. Lanye Miller and the Bulldogs on the opening drive like a knife through butter. His sixth touchdown of the year. Nothing fancy about it. Just your little zone play to the right side. Get behind your fullback camp in the tight end and push it in. Just pushing off that Colorado State defensive line like nobody's business. Not much resistance there. Not at all. Gessling's extra point is up and good. Fresno State doing exactly what they do best, running right at you. Lanye Miller puts him up 7 zip. I'm New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. Welcome to the third annual New Mexico Bowl. We're honored that the land of enchantment is part of college football's rich postseason tradition. And we're proud of what the New Mexico Bowl has become in such a short time. On behalf of everyone in our great state, I want to congratulate both teams on a fantastic season. Best of luck in today's game. Please sit back, enjoy the football, and enjoy a little bit of New Mexico. This telecast available on ESPN and ESPN HD. And glad it is with those views here in Albuquerque. 300 days of sunshine. Colorado State, Fresno State in the third New Mexico Bowl. How, uh, how happy were you when that sun came out yesterday? I'll tell you. Down on field level, get underneath that bright sun here in New Mexico. Warms you up like a 20 degree difference from the shade to the sun here in Albuquerque. A lot of snow earlier in the week though. Very nice setting for these two teams. They've been raving about the hosting of this bowl. And here is Dion Morton. And Morton, he is shifty and athletic. Goes back to the middle of the field and crosses midfield. A 42-yard return, but a flag is down, so we'll check on that. from the legal block. So that's going to bring it back. All right, let's go back to that touchdown and that impressive opening drive. Let's just watch the, the end of the play. The, this is the touchdown play. Watch this side of the offensive line, defensive line, as they make their movement here. What's happening right off the bat is Colorado is taking angles and trying to get penetration. Fresno State reads it appropriately, and they run exactly where Colorado State vacated when they were trying to slant and get inside. Now, Colorado State will try to do much the same as what we saw from Fresno offensively. Gartrell Johnson, the feature player. Here's Billy Ferris, senior quarterback on first down, and Ferris able to get it complete to Deion Morton for a five-yard gain. Well, he's a senior, but he had never started prior to this season, Billy Ferris. He's gotten better as the year has gone on. Coach Fairchild, in fact, went as far to say as he's probably the most improved player on the team. And, Rod, that simply has to do with gaining experience as the year. Uh, he, he said more than that. I mean, you know, he said in the spring they couldn't complete yeah. a pass. <laughs> he doesn't they, hold back no, much, does he? They had real doubts about their ability to throw the football. Man in motion is Greer as Johnson is the lone back. And here is the big running back who just pushes defenders forward about a yard short of a first down taken down by Mark Roberts. But he is a big, big 
hunk of running back to take down at 225 pounds in that power style. Well, and he's going to be featured. I mean, he's a, he's a big guy. Fresno State has struggled with teams that have run the football well, and they have a big offensive line, big tight ends. You just know that Colorado State has looked at the Boise State tape, the Nevada tape, and they said all those teams ran for a lot of yardage. We can, too. Well, as you see, Ferris splitting out now, so expect a direct snap to Johnson. Third and one. Here he goes, breaking loose his guard, Trell Johnson. Inside the 20-yard line, chased down by Desia Don and Sherrod Davis, but the direct snap on third and one works to perfection. 57-yard run. Well, and Tess, it works because when you have a direct snap, now you take the quarterback out and you have an extra man. Blocker on blocker. So now everybody has someone they can block, and now the ball carrier is free. And you waste a guy covering the quarterback. Now with Johnson, you can see he's quick. He gets in the hole. He doesn't have breakaway speed, but he certainly gets in and out of the hole in a hurry. As advertised, Gartrell Johnson. This is Grant Stucker. And he's inside the 10 and trying to power his way into the end zone. Touchdown. So a direct snap to a running back and then the backup quarterback. Wow. Colorado State offense bringing it early here in New Mexico. Well, look at what they do. They just bring everybody full this way, and now you've got these guys caught up inside. Fresno State caught inside on this action. Great blocking out in front. You've got Kyle Bell, 34, leading the way. Impressive. Jason Smith makes it a tie ball game. First rushing touchdown in the career of Grant Stucker, the backup quarterback. Top ball game here in Albuquerque. Programs meet in the granddaddy of them all. The 2009 Rose Bowl game presented by City, Penn State, USC. Coverage begins New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. The Rose Bowl lives here. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by the New Mexico Tourism Department. Well, that was the pep rally yesterday here between... Fresno State and Colorado State. Green versus red, which is a perfect fit here in Albuquerque because that's the basic answer. That's the question of life in New Mexico, Rod. Not which Christmas. way you want your chili? <laughs> red or colors. green? <laughs> what did you have? Did you go red I or green? The, I had the green chili stew the other night, and it is outstanding. It's kind of like the barbecue debate in the Carolinas. It's the red or green chili here in New Mexico. Here's Evans from the 10. And he is taken down at the 27-yard line by Kyle Bell. Hey, Tess, let's go back to the touchdown. I, I want to show you a great convoy. Now, watch how they start here. They're going to block down here, but that's not the big thing. Watch all the guys who come out and get in front. You're going to have a convoy of about four blockers leading Stucker on this. Take a look at it. Look at what he has here. One, two, and then three, and come on in. As long as they can get that many blockers out on counter runs like that, Fresno State is going to have a big problem stopping the run game. Bulldogs, two tight ends, and now they come with Wiley on an end around, and Wiley has yardage out to the 33, so we've seen some creative offensive play calling early on. Uh, defensive impact players, Colorado State, Tommy Hill. He's their best pass rusher, had three on the season. Banged up shoulder, but still effective rushing from the edge. Michael Sisson, 
freshman All-American linebacker. Not a big guy, but very active, a playmaker on defense. And on the other side, how about Gerard Thomas, a freshman cornerback? He's going to be matched up with a pretty big receiver in Shai Azir Tutu. And that's going to be a matchup we'll watch. Three receivers on second and four for Brandstater. And Brandstater has a complete to a Jared Tutu, and he breaks loose across midfield to the 42-yard line with Pignata finally getting his hands on him. Uh, okay, now, you know where this is going for me. You're going to have to talk me off the, off the ledge if we don't see any defense at some point. Right, this is shaping up to be a ball game where it's going to be all about the offense. And we're not getting anything. Watch a missed tackle out here. And if you miss a tackle on a Giro Tutu, he can go all the way. And that's Nick Eppenier, Oppenier, who makes that attempt but doesn't make the tackle. Rod, you're seeing the three weeks of practice with these offensive coordinators just opening things up, creative play calling, getting out on the perimeter, making the game vertical a bit. Now back to the run is Matthews. And Matthews goes for four as Sisson, the freshman All-American, number six, made the tackle. Well, Tess, you make a good point about the offenses and what they like to do coming into a bowl game and having time. There's another companion point to that is, is that defensively, how much do you hit when you have time off? People are afraid. You want to get healthy. And so the defenses in bowl games tend to be a little bit shaky early on until they get to game hitting speed again. That's a very good point. Now there is Sisson. We're going to keep our eye on him today. He's going to have an outstanding career. Everything's right in front of him. Here's Wiley again. Devon Wiley, but this time he is wrapped up immediately. A flag comes in late as Nick Oppenier made the tackle. That was a two-yard loss. Personal foul, helmet to helmet contact. Number 10 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Jeff Herinick, their senior middle linebacker. Uh, late there yeah, while well, Wiley was down. Yeah, well, I think the call was a, a, a mischaracterization. It wasn't helmet to helmet. It was a shoulder forearm to the head when the player was defenseless. Either way, that's a personal foul. You do get flagged for that. Lorenick is a national scholar athlete, 3.91 GPA. And that penalty costly there. Brand Stater over the middle to Big Bear Pasco. And it'll be first and goal again for the Bulldogs. 23-yard reception to the 260-pound tight end. Well, here's your tight end right here. Just keep your eye. He's just going to clear behind the linebacker. And Brandstater does a nice job of waiting for him to get behind Pagnotta. Pagnotta makes the tackle. But nice job here. The running game allows you to sneak your tight end behind the linebackers, drops it in perfectly. So back and forth these offenses go. Harding lines up in the power eye. Two tight ends for the Bulldogs. Harding diving to the corner. Touchdown! So two times at close range, the Bulldogs able to get it in. Well, they get a nice job by Vince Pasco blocking at the point of attack. And then Harding gets to the edge. Does he get the plane? Absolutely. He gets the ball on the pylon. Harding came on strong the in the second half is being reviewed. of this season as Colorado State is hoping that this review will show otherwise. Here's another look. Yeah, the, the key is simply whether the ball breaks the plane. And there you see he put the point of the ball. looked like it hit the goal, crossed the goal line as he hit the pylon. I want to ask you a question, though, about his back foot before the ball hits the pylon. Ah, right there. Yep, yep. You see that foot there, Rod, before the ball yep. gets to the pylon? You know, you're absolutely right. The ball does cross the pylon, but from this angle, you can see it's that left foot that steps out of bounds at about the two-yard line. I think this one's coming back yep. clearly. Yeah. Yeah, that you need you need conclusive evidence to overturn the call on the field and that is conclusive evidence in my view that that left foot stepped out of bounds on the two-yard line right there 
Now, Jim Ein is our replay official today, and that's a pretty good look yeah. from the guys down in the truck to show Jim that Harding yeah. did not get to and, that pylon. And you can't fault the official there as, as we were all looking to see, did he get the ball over the goal line? And he gets the ball over, but he steps out at the two. So referee Gil Kepke will likely get the word of the touchdown being reversed. As Steve Fairchild and Pat Hill look on. How about the offensive pacing early on here in this game? Well, not hurry up, no huddle, but the action has been frantic. It has. And here's the call. After review, it was determined the ball carrier stepped out of bounds at the two-yard line before the ball crossed the plane of the goal line. Second down and goal. So they got it right. Yep. Great job in the replay booth. Clearly, left foot, out of bounds, ball not beyond the goal line. So make for a second and goal as Harding stays in in that eye formation for the Bulldogs. Harding testing the middle and driving forward in for the score. Fifth rushing touchdown of the year for Anthony Harding. Just, just too easy. Power running. Watch as they pull their guard, 69, Andrew Jackson, from the right side to the left side to lead over that left side, and Harding gets in behind him. Nice and easily done. They have had little resistance from the Colorado State defensive front. Now their defensive coordinator, Larry Kerr, is going to have to get after his guys because Fresno will do that all day long. 14-7, Bulldogs up. Welcome back to the New Mexico Bowl. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you. Well, they never forget a rival as the CSU fans mentioning Colorado there. Today's storylines brought to you by K Jewelers. You see the Fresno State Bulldogs, their ninth appearance in 10 years. Colorado State coming back after four seasons of losing records, getting into a bowl game with a 6-6 six and six record. First year coach, Steve Fairchild. Steve Fairchild had an interesting comment as Gessling is set to kick off about, you know, trying to get back to where they once were and the realities of what this program once was. Here's Morton now from his five. Morton tries to spin free. Fairchild told us yesterday, Rod, he said, I was caught off guard how good TCU, Utah, BYU are right now in this edition of Mountain West. He said, when I had the job back with Sonny, yeah. Sonny Lubin, yeah. it was just BYU, and by the time I left, we had actually usurped them. We yeah. had closed the gap and then jumped out in front, but he's determined to get back to that point. Well, he's right. I mean, he was in the NFL the last, you know, seven, eight years or so, and in that time, BYU, you know, kind of came back. TCU started really taking over. Utah really blew up. And Colorado State fell off. Mountain West had an outstanding year. Ferris to Johnson, and Johnson is wrapped up immediately by Desia Dunn. Rob, talk to me about these impact players for the Rams. Well, we talked about Gartrell Johnson and what he does. First team all Mountain West Conference. Powerful guy. We've seen his action already. Deion Morton, touchdown maker. The last few weeks, he's been on fire. Seven touchdown receptions, 10 for the season. And Corey Sperry, this is a guy you're going to hear about next season in the NFL. A big prospect, a little bit under the radar. Had an ACL injury that he was able to come back from. Second and 11. Johnson. The blockers out in front. And Gartrell Johnson gets loose again. Out to midfield. Yeah, well, if you're a fan of Colorado State back in the 90s and the old Washington Redskins, well, I think you like this. How about just the old counter trade? Just make sure you bring your guys out around, and they're going to lead you on this all the way. 
You pull your guard, you pull your tackle, and now you've got a convoy again. We talked about that with the first drive, how they got that done. Johnson just gets in behind them, and that's old Colorado State football that they ran in the 90s under Sonny Lubick. The Redskins ran it with Joe Gibbs. And I got visions of Joe Jacoby and big John Riggins and Timmy Smith back in the day there, and that's that kind of offense that Johnson benefits from. This time testing the right side and no gain on the play as McKenna Ike made the tackle. Well, part of the problem for your defensive impact players dealing with all that stuff, Chris Carter, fast guy, they're not big on defense, but he's an outstanding player. Can he hold up on the outside? Nico Heron, he's a bigger linebacker who has to handle those tight ends and those big backs outside, 58 tackles on the season. And then Moses Harris, he's a nosy safety, second team all whack. He's trying to get up around the line of scrimmage and have an impact on that Colorado State running game. Make it to 38. Second down. Ferris with time. Airs it out. Looking for Morton. And it hit the back of a defender. Penalty markers come in as Sherrod Davis had coverage on Deion Morton. And it is it is pass interference. Davis didn't look back for the ball. Made contact prematurely. Pass interference, number eight of the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. You know, and the way they run their deep routes can really lull you to sleep. You clearly pass interference there. He's not looking. He's grabbing the guy. It's easy call. But I, I was impressed by watching Colorado State's tape and how they do these things. They lull you to sleep. Most teams, when they run a go route, they just take off. These guys kind of lull you with kind of a three-quarter, half-pace mm -hmm. speed. They wait, they, and then they take off at about 15 yards down the field. So you have to have a lot of blocking, a lot of protection to run deep routes the way they do it. And although we'll see a lot of Johnson, you noted in preparing for this game, Rod, that they will go deep. They'll go up top against you often. Here they go again. Ferris doing it one more time to Greer. Tries for the diving catch, but couldn't hang on. Davis with coverage again. You see how long that play takes? That is very slow developing, but they have plenty of pass protection for it. They keep extra guys in to make sure they can do this. Look at all the blocking protection they have. Almost max protection, and then they have two guys on a route. Plenty of time to try to get the ball out there to Rayshon Greer. And, and he's made great catches this season. That's one that just barely got away. First incompletion of the game for either team today. Ferris now working out of the gun on second and ten. Ferris with the little setup to Johnson and another first down as Johnson, everything he does when he gets his hands on the ball is just power, momentum, downhill, 16 more yards. Well, there's no wasted energy or motion with Johnson. When he gets the ball, he's heading right upfield. Now, he benefited from a great block by Adrian Martinez that time on Kyle Knox. You'll see number 60 show up in your screen and get a nice block to get him going. Right here, this guy, right there. That opens up a huge lane inside for Johnson. But Johnson, no wasted energy at all. No stutter stepping, gets in the hole, gets out, gets yardage. They called Martinez a leather helmet type throwback when we asked for a scouting report on him. Ferris rolling and eventually throwing it out of bounds as Akina Ike at the pressure on Ferris. We talk about Gartrell Johnson and what he's done this season. 554 carries in his career, 22 touchdowns, almost 1,200 yards rushing. Only four carries so far today, but, man, he, he's been a big impact on this game. Offensive coordinator Greg Peterson said, hey, sometimes we just ride the train. Johnson is that yeah. train. They're, they're at their best the more he touches the ball, right? Second and ten. Here comes our counter tray again. And Johnson trying to fight for yardage to the 12-yard line. Yeah, and, and that counter tray is so effective because, you know, they run it off of their normal inside stretch play where they, they stretch the defense to get you going one way and they come back the other way. That's Ben Jacobs who got in on that tackle with a little help from Moses Harris. 97 yards rushing already for Gartrell Johnson. 
at the 57 yarder on the direct snap on the opening drive. Third and six. Four receivers for Ferris. Ferris unable to connect with Morton that time, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Mo Harris, the junior safety, was covering Morton on the play. Well, that, that's what Dan Brown wants to do defensively. He wants to get to his five defensive back package. Now, if he can get his nickel package on the field, then they have a shot at stopping Colorado State. But when you don't do that, when they're running the ball up and down the field, you got no chance of getting into third and long. See, Jason Smith has had an outstanding year. This from 29 yards, and the scoring continues here in Albuquerque. Field goal drive for Fairchild and the Rams. Just about a six-hour drive from Fort Collins down here to Albuquerque. And a good crowd came out to see CSU's return to the postseason here in the New Mexico Bowl. And a good strong boot by Smith. So Rashad Evans will take a knee and the touchback. Uh, it's been about Fresno State and their powerful running game and behind Anthony Harding. He's done just a tremendous job so far in this ball game. The blocking up front has been just outrageous. He hasn't been touched until he's gotten past that first level of defense, and he's already been into the end zone in this ball game. That offensive line has had its way with Colorado State's front seven. And they can ro rotate in any of these running backs, can the Bulldogs, and get similar production. Right now it's Lanye Miller, and Miller right up the middle. To just over the 25 yard line, a gain of six. But they're all very capable in the rotation in the backfield, Rob. Yeah, and, and you know, we've talked about Ryan Matthews, and, and he's a special player in my view. He's a guy that can get you a big play, a big chunk, and he can do it in the passing game, he can do it in the running game. But they have three capable running backs. I mean, they've gotten more than 2,000 yards out of the tailback position, and, and that's phenomenal. And that's just the way they coach their offense. Power running game. Two tight ends now. Miller remains the lone back. And he gets the call. And he has wrapped up about a yard and a half short of the first down. It's Jake Galusha, who's actually a transfer from New Mexico State, came in and made the tackle. He's a guy they say plays with a lot of heart and intensity. Just flies around looking to make plays. And as CSU Rams defense will be well served, making a big play here on third and two. I don't know why Fresno State would do anything other than pound. They've had their way up front. Anthony Harding and another first down for the Bulldogs. You see, part of, part of the problem for Colorado State is that they aren't really big you know the linebacking spot either so they're they're getting a little manhandled when they get caught up in there you see number six Sisson get inside he's only about 5 10 5 11 210 pounds or so and he's getting mixed up in there with some big guys that are getting their hands on and his game is he, he's got to use his quickness he's got to get around blocks he's got to use leverage he can't let those big guys get their hands on him tight end shifting in motion Brandstater to pass on first down, airing it out and stretching out, but unable to come up with the play was Shea Ajira Tutu. Now it's day one of Capital One Bowl Week, and it continues tonight. This is a good one. The Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl. Max Hall, what a season he had. The quarterback for BYU is number 16. Takes on the Arizona Wildcats. The Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Looking forward to hearing Mike Patrick and Todd Blackledge and Holly. Should be a good one from Vegas. How about the way the Mountain West beat up on the Pac-10? Oh, what a year. What a day they had back in September. Matthews. And he is stopped again. That's actually a blown play there. It looked like Brandstater slipped and just ate the ball. Yeah. Yeah, it couldn't make the handoff to Matthews. Oh, there it is. You're right. Yeah. Entire defense collapsed on Matthews. Yeah. Now, this is a... Uh, this is going to put Colorado State in a good spot. Larry Kerr, their defensive coordinator, was hoping to get these third down situations like this. He wants to bring a little pressure. Thinks he's got a pretty good handle on how to 
handle the passing game. It was the running game that he was worried about. Let's see how Brandstater deals with a third and long now. Has time, and it was off the hands. It would have been a first down, but Azera Tutu could not hold on to the ball. That was a perfect throw by Brandstater on that little skinny post. Gets rid of the ball on time. And this ball has got to be caught. And Fresno State has suffered all season from the inability to get big plays out of the offense. Well, here's a new concept in this game, a punt. <laughs> Alex Square, he bobbled the ball. <laughs> Fell right back on it, but Alex Square reached out, didn't control it, and then jumped on it. Seven seconds to go in the first quarter, and the first moment of a defensive stand, but this could have been costly. Yeah, he just took his eye off of it, didn't settle underneath that ball. Fortunately, it bounced right in front of him. Ferris could be the last play of the quarter. It's a pass on first down, plenty of time, winds it up, and just overthrows Morton. <laughs> Zia Dunn was covering the speedy Dion Morton, but that'll close a wildly entertaining first quarter of action here in the New Mexico Bowl. You see how long it takes him to run their deep routes. Just barely missing that one. That little stumble midway really threw the timing off a bit. So a good start for both offenses. Fresno with the running game, Colorado State bringing it to a bit. 14-10 Bulldogs on top. Glad you're with us watching the 2008 New Mexico Bowl, part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you here in Albuquerque. See, those are green chili folks right there, Rod. Those are green chili stew folks, the Rams fans. Yeah, but, you know, the red folks are important, too, now. They are, you know. And right now, those in red are enjoying a 14-10 lead as Fresno State with a couple of rushing touchdowns. But CSU just had a defensive stop and now on offense to start this second quarter. Kyle Bell, the lone back, and he gets the call straight ahead out across the 35-yard line. He's a very interesting story. Let's get to Rod's research for CSU. Now we had some time to dig into both these teams, and Colorado State, we saw their running game, and it's all about Johnson. He's got to carry the ball a lot, and he should have more than 130 yards on the day. Actually, he got about 97 in the first <laughs> quarter. And defensively, it's all about stopping the big plays and making sure that Shai Ajir Tutu doesn't go off on him. Well, isn't that interesting because Johnson's well on his way to over 130, and Tutu just dropped a key third down yeah. pass. Yeah. 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 So your research dead on there for at least the first quarter. Ferris. And that is incomplete as Davis had the coverage and swatted it away. Yeah, Davis is really one of those fine outside corners. He plays this route perfectly, doesn't allow too much separation, keeps the left arm free, handles Gardner very, very well. That's a, that's a good matchup out there. Fresno State feels really good about their corners matching up against these wide receivers from Colorado State. Sherrod Davis leads the team and passes broken up. And now Anthony Hart's on to punt for the first time for the Rams. Takes a bounce and will be down at the 27 yard line. Well, we saw the research for Colorado State. Now, you had a lot of time to prep Fresno this year, often this year. Yeah, yeah. Give it to me. Right. Pretty simple. There is one issue that affects their entire team, and that is their run defense. When their run defense is good, it helps their offense. When their run defense is bad, it hurts their offense. It means that their offense is off the field. They become impatient. <laughs> they try and chuck it down the field, and they lose their character. Now, now, you make me laugh because we've done Fresno a lot this year, and you have finally whittled it down to yeah. just this. Yeah. After One thing. weeks and yep. weeks 
of preparing to do a Fresno game. It comes down to one simple thing. I like that. A streamlined a final exam. research. And you saw the numbers from Johnson there. So the run defense does need to step up. That was low and incomplete intended for Bear Pasco. Yeah, when, when that run defense is going badly, you know, Brandstater and company aren't on the field. And then when they do come on the field, they feel this sense or they play with a sense of urgency to get a score, to do something. And then all of a sudden they're back on the sideline and the defense is out there for another 10, 12 plays and they fall further behind. And then they start chucking the ball all over the field. That is not who they are. Anthony Harding, the lone back. Harding, look at this. Another first down from Harding, and he has been running so well today. 19 more yards for Anthony Harding. Uh, body on a body. They just aren't getting off blocks. Lots of room inside. Just take a look at how all this. You make sure you've got a guy block here, a guy block here. Now you're one-on-one -on -one in the hole. You're one-on-one -on -one in the hole, and if you're a good back, you have to win that, and that's exactly what Harding does. He wins that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Harding has 72 yards so far today. So both running games being showcased here. And now on the end of round is West, and West is taken down for a loss as Ricky Brewer was in the backfield. Yeah, and, and it's a loss of nine. Yeah, I don't get that because when you run to the edge, you're playing to the strength of this team. You're playing to the strength of Ricky Brewer and Michael Sisson, who are athletic linebackers who can run outside. All game long, you're killing them inside. You know, you just I, run straight at yeah, him and yeah. get something done. Yeah, I mean, keep going at him. You know, throw the ball down the field. But when you run reverses and the like, you're allowing Brewer and you're allowing, allowing Sisson to get into the game. And right now, th those two linebackers, key guys, they've been out of the game. So it backs him up to a second and 18. Miller not going anywhere at all. Michael Sisson. Yeah, I, I think Clark. I think that reverse call is one call that Doug Nussmeyer would like to have back the offensive coordinator. I mean, he'd had a great string of things going. I think that's the one thing he says, ah, maybe I went to that too soon. And now they're in a in a third down hole here. The freshman All-American just getting in with his hand and Tripping up Miller there. He is such an active player. He's the future. He is the future of this defense. Third and 18 for Brandstater. Pressure comes. Able to get it to Pasco. But Pasco is run out at the 49-yard line. Well short of a first down as John Clark and Michael Sisson Got to him quick. Yeah, you know, in, in today's game, it only takes one bad play to really take you out of a series, take you out of a drive. And that reverse took Fresno State out of this drive. It put him in a second and long, a third and long, and they couldn't recover from it. So Malone to punt to Alex Square, and he bounces it off the fingertips again. Does it look all right? All right Turn it on. What's that? So two times now, Alex Square has struggled fielding the punts. Well, the first time he didn't settle underneath the ball. This time he just drifted to it. You got to get back and get underneath it. That Rams running game back on the field when we return. Colorado State. They woke up this year, winning their last two games, getting back in the mix, back in a bowl, thanks to Billy Ferris. And, of course, the running of the Mountain West first-teamer, Gartrell Johnson. Deion Morton, he is small and shifty and a big playmaker. And the future is all about Michael Sisson, freshman All-American. And we've seen all of them contribute so far today for head coach Steve Fairchild, trailing Fresno State by four here early on in the second quarter. Johnson tries to fight free. He's able to push ahead for positive yardage against Mark Roberts, the big defensive tackle. Well, Gartrell Johnson has really been the main man for Colorado State today. Big numbers, big running, big holes for him to get in and out of a 57-yard run in the first quarter to set up an 18-yard touchdown. And then on a screenplay, great acceleration 
getting out of the backfield. He's been the key component of this offense. And right now, coming in at quarterback, as they will do often, is John Mosier, number seven. He's a do-it-all kind of player, is Mosier. The direct snap fakes the handoff and goes right into the meat of that Fresno defense. But Mosier will come in and play some quarterback. He had a 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against Colorado, so he's a very speedy guy. Yeah, just a little bit better effort up front by Fresno State, though, in this series. You know, they're moving their defensive linemen a little bit, getting a little bit of penetration, and that's helped them, you know, slow down this Colorado State rushing attack on this, this series here. Third and five in a New Mexico Bowl that went from all offense to now the defense coming up and making a statement. Let's see if the Bulldogs can do so here on third and five. Ferris able to complete it right at the sticks to Ryan Gardner. Mo Harris made the tackle, but a pickup of six for the Rams. Yeah, got a good spot because the ball simply has to reach the yard marker. Remember, they started at the 20, so just get the ball beyond it, and you see, yeah, good spot by the official. Turned his shoulders upfield, got beyond the 30, marked it correctly for Gardner. Gardner has a way of doing that. He made a key third down catch to move the chains on CSU's game-winning drive in the season finale against Wyoming. That was a win to get them bowl eligible. Now back to basics. Johnson. Fresno State, well, you know you're likely to get a big dose of Gartrell Johnson. That's a loss of one. Well, as you see, Cornell Banks, the big man, 300-pounder, getting in the mix along with Sean Plummer. Yeah, he, he's getting after right now. And, and right now, Fresno State's playing first down like they're in a phone booth. I mean, they're getting eight guys up around there and saying, okay, we know you're running. We're going to settle in here. We're just going to fight, and we're going to not give up any yardage here. We're going to keep attacking right in this small area. And so that's worked these last couple of plays. And now maybe you think about spreading them out a little bit if you're Colorado State. Ferris with time and that was not a pretty looking picture that throw to Corey Sperry so it's incomplete so a good adjustment you're saying made by defensive coordinator Dan Brown for Fresno State yeah well Dan Brown is no slouch he's been around he understands what to do and you see Corey Sperry was open never looked back the timing was thrown off for him had he seen the ball was coming they would pick up the first down He's, he's a, a prospect, had the ACL last season, but uh, he's on the list of top tight ends for the NFL draft next uh, next spring. And he was able to successfully petition the NCAA for another year of eligibility. And here's the forward pass to Johnson, and Gartrell Johnson is breaking loose. Finally corralled at the 12-yard line by Jake Jordy, but once again, Johnson gets loose 58 yards. Yeah, it's just, again, the shovel pass off of that counter action, almost like the counter tray. And you'll see it from the end zone. They do the same thing. They make sure they pull the guards, and then they get right behind them. They make it a pass, but it's just like the running play. And now, how about a missed tackle to get things going right there as Davis tried to get off of his block to come make the tackle, couldn't get there. And now, Greer is the guy who does the great job blocking. Actually got away with a little bit of a hold there, but that's okay. Hands were inside. Harris just keeping it himself there on that play. Is down to the 11-yard line. Pick up number two. Double snap there. Are you uh, starting to see that counter tray action in your sleep already? Yeah, exactly. I think those uh, bulldog defenders will be thinking about that when this game's long over. Yeah, that that was the play of the what the 80s. You know, with the Redskins. It, yeah, they just ran that and people copied it, and then it kind of went out of vogue. The Hogs back in the day. to the 10-yard line, and he was
was wrapped up by Ben Jacobs, the fine middle linebacker from Vegas for the Bulldogs. And how about Bell? I mean, that's a guy that everybody thought was going to be a superstar and had a great season a couple years ago. Yeah, he was a star running back as a sophomore, then tore his ACL and his right knee, missed an entire season. Of course, Gartrell Johnson became the star of this offense. But he set the record as the all-time high school rushing leader in Colorado, did Kyle Bell. And he started doing similar things with the Rams before that ACL injury. And he's worked his way back very hard. But Johnson, you know, he's been the superstar this year. Ferris on third down. That's going to be short of a first down as Morton was looking to make a move and shake and bake, but he couldn't get away from Sean Plummer. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Fresno State, nice job. Zone defense around the line of scrimmage there, looking for the short pass. Sean Plummer makes the tackle. They did a nice job of just settling in, reading the quarterback's eyes, and waiting for a short pass. So another field goal attempt for Jason Smith. He made his first one from 29. This now from 22. And that is up and good. So a couple of field goals from Jason Smith. Cuts the lead to one. Mexico Bowl is brought to you by Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Historic Route 66 comes right through Albuquerque, right near our hotel. Always good eats on Route 66. Now there is the defensive coordinator for Fresno State, Dan Brown, who saw his defense the last couple times keep Colorado State out of the end zone, holding them just to field goals, so still a lead for the Bulldogs 14 13 as Jason Smith kicks off shot Evans will get the touchback Fresno State and their running game back out on the field when we return to the New Mexico Bowl Tessator and Rod Gilmore, glad you're with us for the New Mexico Bowl. You know, usually when we show families in the stands of players or coaches, we don't show you an entire section, but that's the Dan Brown family section. 27 members of the Brown family came here today, the defensive coordinator for Fresno State. His story and inspiration to so many involved in this program. First down run, Anthony Harding, and Harding with good gain of seven yards out to the edge. Brown, of course, has been battling brain cancer over the course of the past two years so courageously, and today will be his last game, Rod. Well, yeah, and he's done a great job getting his team to get settled after the rough start. They've competed in the red zone, inside the 20. They've kept Colorado State out of the end zone after that first touchdown. They've had two field goals. So whatever he said to them after the opening drive, he got their attention, and they're playing hard for him, you know, in that compete zone, that inside the 20-yard line. Ryan Matthews gets the call, steadies himself after almost being tripped up, and has first down yardage for Fresno State. You mentioned the Dan Brown family and 27 members being here. But, but, but the whole family, they have like, what, 100 people who show up for dinner? 101. 101 Dalmatians. 100, 101 Browns. There's Dan over there on the left hand. His wife Mindy's up there in the booth with him. Nana Sue, they call her. Nanny Sue, yeah. Sue Brown, his mom. 15 children. Dan, the middle child, 11 boys, 4 girls, 101 family members, 27 of them came here today. Others, they say, are watching us in Alaska and Boston and SoCal. And everybody in the Brown family hoping they can send Dan out here in his last game with a win. Grand State are off the hands of Bear Pasco. Uh, that's a couple of drops. Pasco's dropped one. Azir Tutu's dropped one. Yeah, and Brent Stater, yeah, he's not getting that kind of help. He, he needs to have guys make plays. This guy's going to play in the league. He's going to be in the NFL. He's got that frame, doesn't oh, he, Rob? Well, he's got that 6'5", oh, 225. You walk out on the field, you look at him, you go, that's the prototype of an NFL quarterback. 6'5", 225, stands tall in the pocket. You know, not very athletic, mobile in that sense. 
Strong arm, very accurate. Probably a second day pick in the draft. Lanye Miller finds an opening, and here goes Lanye Miller. He was bottled up and then shook loose for a 69 yard touchdown run. Well, the big plays that have been missing from this offense from time to time return with this guy. Now, watch what happens. Everybody kind of stops and gives up. They assume he's somewhere in there, but they think he's tackled. But Miller just bounces to the outside. Colorado State is caught up inside, and you're not going to catch him from behind. 69 yards for Lanye Miller. And Gessling puts the extra point through. Lanye Miller, his second touchdown today, his seventh of the year. And this one goes for 69 yards. 21-13, the Bulldog Park is back. Now, number one's been the number one story for Fresno State's offense. Lanye Miller, two touchdowns on the day. And a 21-13 lead for the Bulldogs. Tuesday night on ESPN, Capital One Bowl Week rolls on. And everybody's saying, hey, this is the game. Two teams ranked in the top 12. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Ian Johnson, Boise State, unbeaten. Looking for their second undefeated season in three years against TCU. And that great defense led by Jerry Hughes, who leads the nation in sacks. San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Tuesday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Capital I would One Bowl Week. Capital Don't One Bowl that. Week is like Rod Gilmore heaven. <laughs> Gessling, short kick fielded by Myers. Mike Myers. Penalty marker is down as Myers makes a good return out to the 48-yard line. 33-yard return. And Steve Fairchild has seen that a couple times today. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 32 of the receiving team. 10 yards. First down. You know, that, that matchup with Boise State and TCU, I, I think it's going to be one of the best bowl games to watch all of bowl week. You know, Kellen Moore, you know, the redshirt freshman, he's been sensational. People think of Boise as being the remnants of the team from two years ago. Hey, Kellen Moore, a first-year player, the best is still very much ahead of this Boise team. Everybody knows about what they did with their signature non-conference win. Went out to Oregon, put that on the resume. 12-0, we had the game when they waxed Fresno to go 12-0 Thanksgiving. And, of course, very familiar with postseason success. Ian Johnson a couple years ago with the trick play against Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. And now this big spot for Boise again. Bartrell Johnson with a one-yard game. Preparing for this game, I had a chance to see a lot of TCU, you know, on, on their DVDs. And, and that defense is fast and matches up, you know, pretty well with Boise State. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they handle the speed and athleticism of that TCU defense. Hey, Colorado State played TCU oh. tough. 13-7 oh, 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 oh. yes, game. Yeah, they had a shot to win that. Second and nine. And around. This is Morton. And Morton with a seven yard gain. And then another flag comes in. Yeah, they're going to get pites for holding. And pites is number 45, just out to the right side, just hanging on for dear life. Wide space. They got him pretty easily. Illegal block below the waist, number 23 of the offense, half the distance to the goal, replay second down. As for TCU, that dominating defense and Jerry Hughes, 14 sacks to lead the way. And the highest ranking they had this season, currently number 11 in BCS. Remember, there was a point in time when everybody thought TCU might be the BCS buster until that loss to Utah. 
Fifth 10 wing season. They are getting used to having great success in Fort Worth. So that's Tuesday night, 8 o'clock on ESPN, the San Diego County Credit Union Point City of Boise and TCU hook it up. Ferris throwing back to Paunga. And the big fullback goes for a first down out to the 32-yard line. Jake Jordy with a tackle, but a 21-yard gain from the seldom used Zach Paunga. Now, just watch how they do this. They do a nice job. Let's hold it right here. They bring this action we've seen all game long, and that brings everybody over here. And that is the problem for Fresno State. You stop it here, you see what happens now. They've got everybody clear open to the left side. And it's that same counter tray action that Fresno State is focusing on. Gartrell Johnson splits out. He gets it to Mosier. And Mosier is wrapped up right away by Ben Jacobs and Nico Heron. You've got plenty of time here if you're Colorado State. You really don't have to change your character. As Ferris goes to the sideline, looks like they're going to come back with one of their directional snap formations. You've got three timeouts, a couple of minutes. You can stay with your character. You don't really have to start throwing the ball all over the field to try and get a score before halftime. I'm talking about Boise and TCU, Mountain West and WAC. Not a bad showcase of the Mountain West and WAC here today. And Morton again. And Morton looks like he has the first down there as Mosier stayed in with the handoff. Nine yards there. Let's check in with Wendy Nix for a look at what's coming up at the college football halftime report. Wendy. Well, thank you very much. Coming up at the half, I'm joined by Desmond Howard, Trevor Maddich, and Doug Flutie. Wake Forest makes bowl history. We'll tell you what DeMarco Murray's absence could mean for Oklahoma and Heisman voter fallout with two former winners. Back to you. Thanks, Wendy. Look forward to getting caught up on everything going on in college football. Johnson, counter tray again. It's already been a busy day with the Eagle Bank Bowl. Wake on top of Navy. And here we are here with the New Mexico Bowl. Well, one of the keys for Fresno State is really their rush defense. And, you know, we've seen them a lot this season. And boy, did they struggle in November against teams that ran the ball well. I and mean, look what Louisiana Tech did to them. 280 yards. Nevada, almost 500 yards. And then they played a couple of teams that throw the ball, don't run it that well. And it started to look like they were getting it together. But the truth came out again against Boise State as they went for almost 250 on them. But I still, to this day, I mean, that Boise State game was so strange because the defense played them tough in the first half. It was 13-10 yeah. at the break against one of the best teams in the country, a top-10 team, yeah. unbeaten. It ends up 61-10, to 10, and they couldn't stop a thing Boise was doing in the second half. Yeah, as you see the rush yards Colorado State's picked up today on this defense. But, but Boise State has that ability to explode on you quickly. And they did that in about a five-minute span of the third quarter against Fresno State. So 78 seconds to go till half here, and the Rams trying to get on the board with something. Ferris just dumps it. Right over the middle to Paunga again. And once again, a hard running of the big fullback. He goes for 13 yards. Well, you can manage the clock still. You've got two timeouts. Clock stops with the first down. You've got plenty of time and, and not a lot of room to go, so no need to panic here. Ferris. Able to get that complete to the 40-yard line at Tyson Liggett. <laughs> I think they're I think they're panicking a little bit much here. I think they had time to do plenty of stuff. They, they've lost about 20 seconds off their clock. They've got a couple timeouts. And now they use the timeouts. I would have used it earlier and just kept the rhythm and kept people calm and not this sense of urgency on these two back-to-back -back plays they have. So it'll be 43 seconds to go with a second down and seven. Steve Fairchild, first-year head coach, will try to settle in his offense here. Well, Monday night, one of the classic rivalries in the game. Pac-12 
Packers and Bears. Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. And coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. What a time of the year to just sit back. I know it snowed lots back on the East Coast and Midwest. What a great time of the year to just sit back and watch football wallpaper in your living room for the next week and a half. Yeah, pull up a warm drink and get a fire going and uh, enjoy being indoors back east. We are just one of four games on the family of networks today. Eagle Bank Bowl started off today. Ferris has time looking for Johnson. Johnson will have to make a move and he smartly gets out of bounds as Mo Harris was there defensively. So 36 seconds remain. It will be third down. Now, they may not get a touchdown out of this. I mean, Fresno State is taking away the deep ball. They're playing quarters coverage with four guys back, each splitting a quarter of the field. So they're daring them to take the shorter passes. And if that's the best you can get out of it, Take your shot at getting a field goal. I mean, that might be a gimme, but you have to get the ball down the field. You can work the middle without losing anything here. You don't have to throw it deep. You don't have to throw it to the sideline right now. You still have a timeout. Ferris on third down. Sets up the screen. And good defensive pursuit by Fresno to not give up a big play, but still enough for the first down. Logan Harrell made the tackle there. Yeah, and the screen call was a good call. Not bad. Clock stops until you get set here. You can run a play. They should have a play set. Run a play. Keep the timeout for the next one you need. Ferris now has time over the middle again to Johnson. And he lowers his head and has it down to the 22-yard line. Plummer made the tackle. Now seven seconds to go, so it's time for the timeout. But those last two plays really served Colorado State very well. Well, they did a good job of recognizing what we talked about. They weren't going to be able to get the ball down the field. And Fresno State was daring them to throw deep. And in that situation, if you have a chance to get a field goal out of it, you, you take it. Otherwise, you're going to throw an interception. So throwing underneath was the right thing to do here. You're heading toward the half. You're going to have a shot at getting three. Get a little momentum going in at the break. I think Steve Fairchild, that's a good example of what he's talked about in the development of Billy Ferris. Just playing a little more composed, a little smarter, yeah. thinking about how to manage the game and what to do. Something that he didn't have a lot of confidence in with his quarterbacks last spring and definitely coming out of fall camp. Well, how long has this guy waited? I mean, he walked on to Colorado oh. State sat on the bench for four years, took his fifth year to become the starting quarterback, and he probably was helped by the fact that there was a coaching change. Fresh new approach. Sonny Lubick, of course, a legend at Colorado State, a friend of Steve Fairchild's, but these players, they said they were given a sense of new hope and six wins and a bowl berth, and now they've added a couple seconds here, so it's back to nine seconds as Ferris comes back out. Ferris taking his time, taking a shot at the end zone. It was big tight end. Touchdown! What a play by Corey Sperry! Six foot six, and he went up and got it in the corner of the end zone with a big touchdown strike. Are you kidding me? I'm sitting here seeing them line up, and I'm thinking, why aren't they kicking the field goal? Hey, they're not going to throw the ball into the end zone in this situation, are they? Well, heck yeah. They added two seconds. The offense went back out on the field, and the risk-reward play pays off. Oh, that's a gamble. That's really gambling. You're throwing into the teeth of coverage. You don't have any timeouts left, and you're giving away three points. So it works out for them, but I got to tell you, they're not a handful of coaches in the country that would have done that. I wouldn't have done it. Steve Fairchild with that NFL pedigree of taking chances, going after it, playing aggressive. And look at this. I mean, you're hoping for your six foot six inch guy to catch a ball in the corner of the end zone against two guys. You know he's going to be double covered. You're hoping the quarterback doesn't get sacked. I mean, all these things have to go right for you to get this play done. And it does. Now, 
now they're checking to see if he was in bounds. You saw the official right there looking down the line at the right foot, and he called it on the field as the touchdown with the right foot in. I, I, I'm still just stunned that they took the chance. First of all, the play call alone is one thing, but then to pull it off in yeah. this fashion. Well, can you imagine, you know, the back draft? If After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver had a foot down with possession of the ball. Touchdown. Wow. Can you imagine the back draft if there had been a sack or if this ball had been incomplete? Whoa. But a tremendous job over Sherrod Davis and Lauren Bell by Corey Sperry. And you can see why he's got NFL potential. So the extra point cuts it to a one-point game. The Fresno defense thought maybe a field goal attempt, but no. Yeah, you can't coach height, you know? And Dan Brown, oh my goodness, can't believe it. Right coverage, right guys, right place. And then a six-foot-six-inch guy just makes a dramatic catch. Nine seconds on the clock when the offense trotted back out onto the field. And Billy Ferris and Corey Sperry hooking up. Two seniors on this team, a team that's been through rough patches in recent years. You know, Steve Fairchild made a point, Rod, of saying, hey, I want to send these guys out winners. Yeah. That's important to me. Yeah, yeah he said that the, the, the older class, they came in at the end of the Bradley Van Pelt era where they were still having success under Sonny Lubick at Colorado State and the expectation was that that would continue but these guys have had four years of losing until this season they have a chance to go out with a winning record Rashad Evans with the touchback just two seconds on the clock when Sperry was able to haul that in. Wow. I I'm still stunned by that play. And Rod, how about these folks that sit back and say there are too many bowl games? Ah, uh, what does it matter? Says six and six, seven and five. This has been as entertaining yeah. of a first half as you could want. Oh, absolutely. We've had big plays with the running game, 69-yard touchdown runs, gutsy calls, creative play calling, and then the sensational drama just before the half there. All right, I think the players are having fun. I think the coaches are coaching it to have fun. And I think it means something to both these teams. So Harding just looking to close out this first half. He had himself a very fine half of football, did Anthony Harding, as well as Lanye Miller with two touchdown runs for Fresno. But the big story of the first half, what a finish. Corey Sperry with two seconds to go. Now let's join Wendy Nix, Trevor Maddich, and Desmond Howard in the studio for the Flomax Halftime Report. Thank you very much. We are so glad you could be with us as we get you caught up for the second half. Plenty to talk about, though. There is a quadruple header of games on this first bowl game Saturday. I am Wendy Nix alongside Desmond Howard and Trevor Maddich. Up next, 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2, it's the Magic Jackson. ...presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Great sights and sounds of the 2008 New Mexico Bowl, part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Our score at the break, 21 to 20, just moments away from kickoff here in the second half. So glad you're with us here as the Bulls have begun. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Everybody talking about Mountain West versus WAC with TCU Boise State. Yep. How about this entertaining game oh. here between the two conferences, right. including a tremendous finish just before the half. I still can't believe it. I'm still stunned at the fact that Colorado State passed on the field goal and took a shot to the end zone and came up with the six on a gamble when Sperry comes up with this catch in the end zone. That six foot six inch tight end is going to wind up playing in the NFL. Tremendous play. 
still stunning and had to be stunning for Fresno State. Yeah, just two seconds when he caught that ball to make it 21 to 20. Hey, the running back play, just outstanding <laughs> in the first half for both teams. Running back's gone wild. I mean, you know, pick one. I mean, all three backs in this ballgame have been outstanding. How about Hardy for Fresno State? He's had a huge first half behind that big offensive line, and it wasn't enough just for him. Lanye Miller got into the act as well. They have two backs that are about to break 100 yards already, and then on the other side for Colorado State, Gartrell Johnson was the show offensively as he had a big first half as well. The running backs have been doing it. Not a lot in the passing game, but the running game. Take a look at the backs. Harding, nine carries, 86 yards. Look at Miller, 14 yards a carry is his average, and Johnson is already over 100 yards just in the first half. Look at the first half team stats between CSU and Fresno, and you see those gaudy rush stats, 146 and 179. And CSU doing a good job with time of possession, but that's easy to happen when Gartrell Johnson is running the way he has been running. But we've seen the emergence and the growth of Billy Ferris throughout the stretch of this season for the Rams. They won their last two games of the regular season. And Ferris and company will be trotting out, getting the ball first here in the second half. The kick from Gessling. And John Mosier from a yard deep in his own end zone. Mosier still using his blocks. Another flag comes down as Mosier and the Rams had another good return. But two times already today, they've had him brought back. 44-yard return from Mosier. Yeah, and that was a late flag with a late block. During the return, number 85 of the return team holding at the spot of the foul. 10 yards, first down. They had already picked up about a good 30, 35 yard return before the holding. And that's gotten them now three times today. Head coach Steve Fairchild. He was the starting quarterback for the Rams back in the day. In fact, 2 0 as a quarterback here at University Stadium and 2 0 as an opposing assistant coach here. And he says, the heck with that. I want the yardage. But he told us how important a win this would be rod in terms of building this program if they could come up with this bowl win here today johnson counter tray again and once again he was following his blocks downfield a good nine yards before contact was initiated an 11-yard pickup for Gartrell Johnson. Well, you said it kind of pray. I mean, I can't help but think Washington Redskins, the Hogs, and, you know, our old buddy Mark May and, oh. and Jacoby and Grimm and those guys. Look at, you know, get in behind those guys, pull them on that counter. You're just raiding the way for Johnson. Yeah, First team football. all conference Mountain West running back Gartrell Johnson. Seventh on the all time rushing touchdown list at Colorado State. He is easy to lean on. They go back to him, and once again, a big seam that he takes advantage of out to the 40-yard line, and another first down, tack on 16 more yards to the big train. Yeah, he's well on his way. You know, we talked about the need to get him about 130 yards or more in this ball game. He's well on his way to that. This is just a power run off tackle. They pull the guard around and lead, and he just gets in behind it. And this is going to make things better for Ferris. And the more they run like this, the more effective Ferris is when he throws the deep ball. And he can throw the deep ball. Right back to Johnson. Why stop? And he gives a little on the back end. Another first down, 15 yards. He ran over Lauren Bell. Remember the Boise State game, the second half. Boise State ran wild over Fresno State. This is just one of those little cutback plays, and he finishes this run. I mean, he's got great balance. He's a hard runner. He's not incredibly fast. We've seen him get caught from behind today, but he is a great runner in between the tackles. He was a stud in high school at Miami Springs. Led Dade County in rushing back then in three straight years now, leading the way for Colorado State. Lockers in front again. This time he was corralled by Logan Harrell. Just three yards there. Steve Fairchild talked about making big strides, big jumps and improvement. Well, the improvement from a year ago, three and nine to six and six, winning their last two games. Well, he better be careful. He's doing it pretty fast, and the expectations 
can go up in a hurry. You know, he, he said that they're getting there with facilities. They've got some work to do with recruiting. And this turnaround, a little bit faster than he anticipated. He didn't want to have a timetable. Ferris now to pass. He tried to get it to Johnson, but it goes incomplete. So it'll bring up a third down. Well, we told you Fairchild has the green and gold in his blood. He was the quarterback. Named the team captain as a senior. Threw for 2,500 yards. And is glad to be back as a part of the program. How about those old school uniforms? You know, back Throwback in, uh, jerseys. 78, 79, and 80. How about the hairdo? Yeah, that too. Third and six for Ferris. And Rayshon Greer hadn't even turned yet when the ball was already nearing him. Yeah, well, that's not Ferris' strong suit. I mean, the intermediate pass is not really his thing. His thing is the deep ball and the drop-off pass. And he gets a little pressure here, and that affects him a little bit, but he should, still should have been able to get that there. But that's just not where he's most accurate. And they've got a fourth down. They're in no man's land. They're going to go for it here. No problem with this one. You know, fourth down on the 41 in a high-scoring game. they got to come up with something. Now, hey, after the way they gambled at the end of the first half. Yeah, this is nothing. Do, do whatever you want. Fourth and six. Line to make is the 35 for Ferris and the Rams. Four-man pressure. Has time. And that is incomplete. He went back to Sperry, who had the big catch just before the half. But Moses Harris was there defensively for Fresno State. Yeah, the two-time whack. All academic man steps up and makes his play. Gets the right hand around there. Was sitting there waiting for it. And again, this is not the area where Ferris throws the ball best. He's best with the deep ball. But I, I got no problem with those guys gambling on fourth down. I mean, hey. You, you, you decide not to kick the field goal with nine seconds on the clock and you throw a Hail Mary into the end zone and get a touchdown, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, it kind of aligns with the tone of this game, that situation right there that Colorado State had. Anthony Harding able to get free from the initial defenders and then taken down at the 44-yard line by Ricky Brewer. So Pat Hill and Fresno State trying to finish up a season rod that had to be considered a disappointment this was a team that was ranked preseason was thought of as the team that could be a bcs buster yep but seven and five well in september this was really one of the really good teams in the country grand stater pressure comes now he gets free azure two two that was a good heads-up play by Brand Stater and Ajera Tutu as the pocket collapsed. A little ad lib, and Ajera Tutu said, "Okay, I'm going to break loose." Well, this is what scouts look for with Brand Stater. You got to have something other than being a big prototype. You got to make plays. You got to be productive. The play's broken down. He keeps his eyes downfield and he makes a play. And that's the kind of thing that gets him to the next level, not just standing in the pocket and throwing the ball. And Ajera Tutu does the right thing in finding his quarterback and helping him out by getting down the sideline. 35-yard reception there from Azura Tutu. Ryan Matthews. He was a starter early, earlier this year when he had 163 yards and three touchdowns in the Labor Day opening game against Rutgers. Then injured and missed six games. You know, getting back to Pat Hill in this season, you know, that Wisconsin loss in September was a devastating loss for the Fresno fan base. And they, they thought all, all is lost because they put everything into getting to the BCS. And losing that Wisconsin game kind of changed everything for the season for them. Of course, he recently interviewed at Washington before withdrawing his name. Lanye Miller had the big first half. And now fighting ahead for first down yardage here near the 10-yard line. Magnata had the tackle on Miller. Well, Pat Hill also, his name up until today, was a link to that Iowa State job that was filled with Paul Rhodes. Yeah, and, and I, I think the reality is that, you know, he's been there 12 years. 
and he's probably taken for granted a little bit. He's had a number of nine win seasons, and they expect that, and, and the fans are waiting for the BCS busting season. And Boise State gets it, Utah gets it, and they expected to have it by now, and they haven't had it. So first down just outside the 10. They can get a first down inside the one. Lanye Miller inside the five to the four yard line. Remember back in the first half, we talked about Fresno State running reverses and going outside. No need for it. No need right? for it. Get back, you know, run between the tackles, pound these guys, beat them. And now they're back to doing that. I mean, they're getting their big fullback, Raynard Camp, 48 inside and pounding inside. The linebackers are a little smaller, but they can handle these guys. And so they're doing it again, and it's working for them. 199 yards rushing already today. It's probably a very easy conversation for offensive coordinator Doug Newsmeyer at the break. Guys, they can't stop us if we do this. Anthony Harding. And Harding is short of a first down at the two-yard line. Brandon Owens came up from that cornerback position and made the tackle. Yeah, and Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator of Colorado State, is trying to hang on. He's trying to find a couple guys that can step up and help out. Ricky Brewer and Michael Sisson, his best linebackers, you know, they're small. I mean, 205, 210 pounds. And those big guys are getting their hands on them, and that's tough. Two tight ends, two fullbacks, and a lone back is Harding. Right up the middle and right over the goal line. Touchdown, Fresno State. The running game does it again. Nothing fancy. A little power run off the left side, leading with camp number 48, pulling around Jackson 69. You got two big blockers leading the way against 210, 215 pound linebackers. As you see Brewer try to get in there and fight off somebody, there's too much power inside. Second rushing touchdown of the day for Anthony Harding. Back to basics for the Bulldogs. Power running game, 28-20 in the New Mexico Bowl. This telecast is available on ESPN and ESPN HD. Beautiful scenes here in Albuquerque for the New Mexico Bowl. Mountain West and WAC, and then the big showdown in the Mountain West and WAC is going to come in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Two teams ranked in the top 12. Number nine, Boise State. Number 11, TCU. Boise State looking for that second undefeated season in the last three years. That is the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week, Tuesday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. I got a question for you. Yes. If you're Ian Johnson and you proposed at the Fiesta Bowl, <laughs> how, how do you top that? How do you top that at this bowl? Oh, boy. Ian's such a good kid. His wife, Chrissy, the former cheerleader. Who knows? But you know he wants to go out on top of the world. Wow. What a great career he's had. He's had a great career. His name is up there with some of the greats in WAC history, like Marshall Falk and Ladanian Tomlinson in rushing touchdowns. Here's John Mosier. And Mosier just across the 20-yard line and then gets some help from his friends. Of course, Boise State, you know, we've had them plenty. We've got no Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator, Harson, and they love the trick plays. Yeah, it is a way of life for them. They don't put it in just for a game. It is part of their offense, and you have to account for trick plays and be prepared for that because if you aren't, you will get suckered in a game with Boise State. They will run two, three, four of them on you before you even think about getting your own. I was on the phone with Reese Davis the other day. I said, Reese, watch out for Tanyan Bissell and Michael Coughlin. They're going to throw the ball. I'll guarantee you, you're going to see one of those two guys throw the ball when you call that game. Flag is down here. So that is coming up Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Boise State and TCU. False start, number 81 of the offense. Five yards, remains first down. This has been a game that has delivered a lot of entertainment, just like that one is expected to do. Yeah, and just do not sleep on TCU's defense. You know, this is the fourth undefeated opponent this season that they'll face. Tenth bowl in the last 11 seasons for TCU. 
and, and I've watched them a lot the last week, you know, and their DVDs and playing against Colorado State and others, and, and that defense is really something. You know, that team could have just had a one play here or there go a little differently, yep. and you're talking about a very different season. You look back at their game against Utah. There's Johnson. Tried to cut back against the grain and gets to the 20. Just a gain of one. So we've got the whack in the Mountain West here today. Good matchup. And then we get it again Tuesday. And you can see that Cornell Banks is banged up a bit as the trainers are out to tend to him. He was in on the tackle. He's a big, strong kid, is Banks. The sophomore goes 300 pounds, and he's going to be key in stopping that man, Gartrell Johnson. They've had a tough time plugging things up with the run defense. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a key inside for them. One of the bigger bodies that they have in Fresno State defensively and historically has been a fast defense, undersized in a lot of spots, but they always manage to find a couple of big guys inside who are really good run stoppers. Well, Banks is a young man who's been emerging lately, and he's backed up by a freshman, Logan Harrell, who has steadily gotten better for them. Yeah, they, they've really missed John Manga, though. Yeah, Manga is a very athletic and aggressive player in the interior of that defensive line. They could use him against Gartrell Johnson. Second and 14 now for the Rams. Five defensive backs in the ball game now. Ferris, pressure came from behind. Just got rid of it as he was hit. Incomplete for Ray Sean Greer. But Chris Lewis, the defensive end, came in targeting Billy Ferris. Yeah, this is the package that Dan Brown wants to be in. He wants to have five defensive backs. And he wants Chris Lewis to put some pressure on. And he brings that. Now, when they get their five defensive back package on the field, you see them now. They can max cover and they can bring speed pass rushers. And Colorado State does not want to be a pass first team. They want to run first. Chris Lewis was recruited by Miami, signed with Miami out of high school, was considered the ninth best defensive end in the country, then came home to Fresno. Ferris to Greer, incomplete. So it'll bring up fourth down. Sherrod Davis had coverage on Ray Sean Greer. You notice the NFL style to the Colorado State offense. All the passing routes are deep, deep comebacks, deep goal routes, lots of protection. They give it time to develop. That's the influence of Steve Fairchild coming over from the Buffalo Bills. Offensive coordinator for the Bills. Prior to that was offensive coordinator for the St. Louis Rams before coming back to his alma mater. <laughs> And the punt from Hartz. And Evans on the return, unable to shake free. So Fresno State up by eight here in the New Mexico Bowl with the ball. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl is brought to you by TD Ameritrade, the independent spirit. That's the Sandia Peak Tramway, not far away from downtown Albuquerque, world's longest passenger aerial tramway. You know, really an amazing part of the country where you can look up and see the snow-capped mountains and then be down here in the metropolitan area in the glorious sunshine. We're yeah. glad to be with you here, Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, at University Stadium, the New Mexico Bowl. Anthony Harding. Yeah, this, this is a critical series for Colorado State defensively. Yeah, they, they can't let Fresno State run the ball down their throat and get a two-possession lead. That would change the character of their offense. They, they might start pressing and rushing and throwing the ball more than they want to. They really need to get a stop you know, in this series. What Coach Fairchild say yesterday? He says, you know, we're just not as athletic defensively as we should be, as solid. And there are times I look out there and feel like we're holding on for dear life. They don't need one of those times right now. Lanye Miller, he had that 
big burst in the first half that went for 69 yards. Here he goes for six as Horinick and Brewer combined on the tackle. Well, you know, they need plays from their linebackers, and Sisson is one of those guys. You see him either bringing him inside to try and create something, but you see the size difference. You see him get caught up against Richard Pacheco, who's about 285 pounds at guard. And so you got a 210 pound guy trying to get around a lineman that is 285. That's tough. Sisson, the freshman All American. Second in the nation in tackles among freshmen. Harding is set back in the eye. And he's got the first down, lowering his shoulders. And getting to the 46 yard line is Anthony Harding. So if you're Colorado State, you need a game changer right now. You need a play on first down to create a long situation for Fresno State. So you got to think run blitzes right now. You got to think pressure. You got to do something where you can get them in second and 12, second and 13, because you can't afford to be third and two on these guys. Well, there were times, Rod, in that second quarter where Fresno State was doing it to themselves just with their own play call. Yep. But now they've committed to what's worked. Grand Stater, play action, looking for a Jared Tutu, and he overthrew him. Uh, you can't miss those opportunities. Very seldom do you have a guy running free. You've got to deliver this one. Got to step into the throw. He couldn't quite step into it. Had a little pressure, but you've got your guy out there. You got to hit those. You got to give your guy a chance. Put more air under the ball. Let him run underneath it. And now Colorado State test. Now they've got the situation second and long. If they can play solid here, they'll have a great third down setup. Well, that's what we talk about the play calling with Fresno. They were running downhill on first down. Wanye Miller hurdles over the first defender and then was tripped up by Jeff Horinick. And so now you have it. Now this is your momentum changing situation for Colorado State. You've got a third and seven. This ought to be a situation where you defensively can get what you want and Fresno State's going to spread you out with four receivers. But you have to find a way to get some pressure. It's a team that only has nine sacks on the season. But you've got to get Sisson involved to create something. He's your best playmaker on defense. Third and seven for Grand State are out of the gun. Flanked by Harding. And Azure Tutu and Brandstater were not on the same page. The pressure came from Michael Sisson, the freshman All-American. Yeah, and Steve Kerr, the defensive coordinator, is thinking and feeling just as I am. You gotta get him involved. You gotta make a play. They bring him off the corner. Pressure disrupts timing of everything. That's the great third down play they needed. Now momentum can shift back over to Colorado State. Still a one possession game. Low punt off to the side, and it takes a Fresno bounce inside the 10-yard line. Robert Malone got a fortunate bounce for that 43-yarder. So, Rod, you said it. They needed the stop. They got the stop. Colorado State still only down eight in the New Mexico Bowl. Unheralded powers square off as 12-0 Boise State meets 10-2 TCU in one of the most anticipated bowls of the season. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Boise State, TCU, Tuesday at 8. College football lives here. Well, Fresno State's already up two zip in competitions leading up to this game, the New Mexico Bowl. The two teams squared off in a chili cook-off at Albuquerque's El Pinto Restaurant on Wednesday night. And then the Bulldogs took down Colorado State in the bowl wall. Look at that, Gilmore. That's, a, that's how you probably yeah, would bowl that's right there. Right? That's my style. That's my style. like that. But that's the way you work it on the dance floor. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> Oh, it's been a good time here in New Mexico. They put on a good show. Very hospitable, this bowl, the New Mexico Bowl, third ever. Joe Tessitor, Rod Gilmore with you at University Stadium. Back to business is Gartrell Johnson and that Rams offense. Ferris to pass on first down to his fullback, Paunga, 
And he is taken down at the 10 yard line by Nico Heron. That's one of the few times somebody other than Johnson has touched the ball. And he's their leading receiver and their leading rusher, 149 yards on the ground, 90 yards in the air. He's been the man. Senior from Miami. Best in the Mountain West. Billy Ferris told us, he said, listen, give it to him all you want. It all it does is open up windows for me. He likes having the big bruising back. This time, Johnson was eaten up in the middle of that defense by Mark Roberts. Third tackle on the day for the 300-pound nose tackle. Now, if you're Dan Brown sitting up there in the booth calling your defense and you're guessing around, you know that the intermediate passing game is not their strength. You know that's probably not what you're going to get here. You're probably going to get a deep ball, or you're probably going to get a screen pass. He'll probably call his defense accordingly. Dan Brown, who has been battling brain cancer for the past two years, and it was told us that this will be his last game. He means so much to this program. Now his defense trying to come up with a third down stop. Morton, good catch over the middle, and a first down for the Rams out to the 31-yard line, a 19-yard reception for Dion Morton. And Morton, a slow-developing route, really took that down the field and then squared it in. They got the pressure inside, picked up the blitz as they were trying to hit home with Will Harding coming inside on a blitz, and they picked that up, and that opened up the middle for Morton. Aunga is the fullback in motion coming out of that slot. And now here's Morton on a reverse. And Morton with a blocker in front, hurdles a man to gain extra yardage, and then put out at the 44-yard line. 25-yard run from Deion Morton. Uh, Tess, we've seen it all day. It's the counter tray action that really causes the problem. Fresno State sees that, and they go that way, and that doesn't allow them to be in position for the reverse coming back. And Ferris helps out with this. Watch him get involved as he comes down, and he's going to throw a block right there. That's a little help there. Quarterback getting in, trying to help out the, the uh, running back, Morton, the wide receiver on the reverse there. Got to like that out of Ferris. And now at quarterback is John Mosier, and he hands off, and it's a trick play downfield to the quarterback, Billy Ferris. So T.J. Borky threw to Billy Ferris. And Borky is a tremendous athlete, but this play just wasn't there. Yeah, it, this doesn't work. You see the quarterback is out right here, one-on-one, -on -one, never in position to make a play, well covered by Davis, and Davis knows he's got to eat up a quarterback in one-on-one -on -one coverage. That quarterback's not supposed to beat a corner ever. So they change up quarterbacks. They come with the wide receiver around and then throw it back to the starting quarterback. Johnson lowering his shoulders and getting free. How about that from Gartrell Johnson? 22 yards of just pure determination. Uh, it's not simply about making sure you run away from guys. There are other ways to make guys miss. You can run over guys. But watch him just make guys get off me. That's Dunn coming up trying to make the tackle, wants no part of him. And then Lauren Bell comes in. He runs over two guys here. And we talked about his balance and his toughness and his strength. And you see the way he finishes runs. To see it done goes a buck 75. He was like a fly on a windshield of an 18-wheeler there. Splat. Ferris brought down. Akina Ike, who gave up his starting position today so that his good buddy and senior Mike Stewart could have the experience in a bowl game, comes up with the sack. How unselfish is that? He said he wanted his buddy Stewart to have the pleasure of having his name on the lineup, having his name be read on ESPN because it's never happened for him as a senior. He wanted to give him that opportunity. Stewart signed with USC out of high school. Then came to Fresno State. Ike, a native of Nigeria, was a walk-on here who's emerged as a great pass rusher. Back to Johnson they go. 
you know, going back to Johnson, one thing we haven't mentioned about him is just how good he is with the football. He just doesn't fumble. What do you think of uh, Johnson as a pro prospect, Rob? Uh, I, I think he's a tough runner. I think the one thing that works against him is that he doesn't have breakaway speed, doesn't have elite speed. But there's a lot of good things he does. He catches the ball, he runs hard inside. I think someone's going to have him in their camp and see what he can do. Good special teams player. Well, look at what he did running the football. 554 consecutive touches without a fumble. I think I know why. Third and 12 now for Ferris and the Rams. And ball is picked off. Sherrod Davis. And Davis with a decent return. But just when Colorado State started getting things going and moving down the field, Ferris gets had. Yeah, well, we talked about the intermediate passing game. That's not Colorado State's strength. You see it from here. Just watch him as he looks and see it. Stop it right here. He's got coverage out here, double coverage. He's going to try and thread the needle right in there. He, that's a bad decision. You've got two guys sitting out in coverage deep there playing for that intermediate pass. He makes the throw. Davis makes the pick. Bad decision. Well covered by Fresno State. Sherrod Davis has an interception, a pass broken up, and three tackles on the day. Anthony Harding now, big holes slicing through that Rams defense crossing midfield to the opposing 49. This is a mental position for the defense. When you, there's a turnover, you have to make sure you get mentally prepared. Call sudden change. Most defensive, defensive teams have trouble when they have to rush on the field in a sudden change. Well, barely Ferris and the Rams offense was knocking on the door. But Sherrod Davis and the Bulldog defense slammed it. 28-20, fourth quarter of the New Mexico Bowl set to come your way. Stay with us. High expectations this year for Fresno State. They were a ranked team, and why not with all the talent they've had this year, like Tommy Brandstater, and the likes of Sweeney and Dilfer and Volick and Carr. And of course, Shea Yi Azura Tutu. Defensively, stars abound. Like Chris Carter, second team all whack. Or the big middle linebacker, Ben Jacobs, who leads the team in tackles. And on this day here, they want to finish up winners by taking the third playing of the New Mexico Bowl. Part of ESPN's presentation of Capital One. Bull Week, Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you on a beautiful day in Albuquerque. Fresno with an eight-point cushion here as we start the fourth quarter. Lanye Miller. Oh, boy, what a big hit by Ricky Brewer. Well, we've been waiting for Ricky Brewer to announce himself with a hit like that. And he picked a good time for it. And he comes flying inside. He's in the middle of your screen. You'll see him. He's got this sized up. No lineman to deal with. He's finally free to make a play. And he delivers big time. Sophomore from Mullen High in Denver. He's a guy that Coach Fairchild, defensive coordinator Larry Kerr, are really counting on in the coming years to keep things heading in the right direction on this turnaround of this program. Looking for room, not finding any at all. Great, great adjustment for Larry Kerr. He brought a run blitz with Mike Pagnata, Pagnata coming inside on the right side. You'll see him to the right side of your screen. There he is right here, number 13. They bring him in the run blitz. They anticipate this play. He cuts off a gap, withstands the block, and makes the play. That's a great call and a great play by Pagnata. And now the Ram faithful have made the six-hour drive down to Albuquerque, getting loud here at University Stadium, looking for a defensive stop here on third and 11. Brandstater coming to the backside, picked off. Tommy Hill. 
the six foot six senior defensive end who's a pass rushing specialist the team captain comes up with a huge defensive play I think he just unnerved Brandstater and Brandstater threw it right to him I mean he looks back now he's right there he can't see him he just misses him he's standing right there all six foot six of him I guess he thought he could get the ball over him, but you got to throw it pretty high. He was trying to go to Harding. I don't think he could see Harding behind Hill. So a golden opportunity now for Colorado State. Johnson. He stumbled. Ball is loose. And it looks like Colorado State was able to fall back in it. Dane Straight, the big left tackle, jumped on it. Uh, he rarely fumbles the football. I and mean, it's the guy who carried it over 550 times without turning it over, 554 to be exact. And he probably learned that lesson. You know, remember the Titans, you know? Coach Boone, his old line, you drop a pass, you run a mile. You miss a blocking assignment, you run a mile. You fumble the football, and I will break my foot off in your John Brown <laughs> hind parts, and then you will run a mile. <laughs> so he doesn't fumble the football. So that movie really made an impact on you, Rod. Oh, it didn't make one on you? <laughs> Ferris, unable to find much room at all as he is taken down just inside the 30-yard line by Nico Heron. That's a great quote. John W. Heisman also had a great fumble quote, but it's not necessarily for family ears. <laughs> uh, keep it G-rated. Big third down. This is actually two down territory if you're Colorado State. Trailing by eight, 12 minutes to go, and in that kind of no man's land where they've gone for it before. And this gives you a sense of what they think of it as Johnson does it on his own. A third and seven, and they give it to their big back, and he goes for eight. You know, our old buddy Mark May is sitting back watching this game going, oh, this is just like back in the day. This is counter tray on a third down when you need it. You pull those linemen, you get your back in behind it, and you pick up seven yards on a third down. That's a lot of confidence in that play, and they've been running it all day long and just killing Fresno State with it. I feel like Joe Gibbs is going to show up here any moment with this play call. <laughs> Mosier at quarterback, and Mosier gets loose inside the 10. So it'll be first and goal for the Rams. 14 yards from John Mosier. And once again, power running. They pull the guard. They get a fullback out in front to lead. Paunga leading the way. And then you have your slash guy, Mosier, running the football. Mosier, who plays a little wide receiver, quarterbacks a little bit. Kickoff return man, too. Johnson. He gave a little, but was taken down at the three yard line. Nico Heron and Lauren Bell combining defensively for Fresno. It'll be second and goal. Yeah, and, and Nico Heron, number 55, is, is going to be a big, strong player for these guys at Fresno State. You know, out of San Leandro High School up in the Bay Area, he's, he's a big guy about 240 he's their biggest linebacker he gives them the bulk that they need they just need more guys you know with his size big power unit in here the heavy load and here comes the big back Johnson and he's just short of the goal line Cornell Banks back into the game coming up with the play to take down Gartrell Johnson but you know the confidence they have with their running game well and confidence in Johnson in particular he takes care of the football he gets positive yardage he rarely knocked backwards three tight ends here Johnson in for the score the interception on one end, the running game on the other. And he just finishes the run. 
That's his drive. It's been his ball game out of the backfield, catching it and running it. And now you think two points. Fourth quarter, you know, we have our rule. You can go for two once you get into the fourth quarter. It's the guys who go for two early in the game that start chasing that have a problem. But now down by two in the fourth quarter, 945. This is the right time to go for two. Right. Earlier they kicked the extra point when they could have tied the game. And now the time has come where you got to get it done. So to tie the game. And Johnson not finding any running room. They have so much trust in him, but Kyle Knox for the Bulldogs read it every which way. Now Tommy Hill had the big interception. Rand Stater trying to get it out to his running back. Hill came up with it. And it set up the score. 28-26 as Johnson muscled in. CSU's team captain Tommy Hill with a big interception. That led to the Johnson touchdown. Just a two-point game here in the New Mexico Bowl. Great day of action as the Bulls have begun. Capital One Bowl Week will continue tonight. The Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl. 16 in the country is BYU taking on Arizona and quarterback Max Hall. Boy, he's been sensational at times this year, Rod. The Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Remember earlier this year when Max Hall was putting up those oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. spectacular numbers good week after week? Good quarterbacks and good receivers tonight, including Mike Thomas of Arizona. Rashad Evans on the return for Fresno State. And he is brought down at about the 25-yard line. So moments ago, they scored the touchdown and went for two. Yeah, you know, they, they didn't go with their counter trade. They just went with their zone play, their stretch play to get uh, Johnson to the outside. And Fresno State completely prepared for it, got great penetration on the left side, particularly Kyle Knox getting up there and also uh, good pressure from 93 Chris Lewis. Steve Fairchild, his first year back at Colorado State, first year as the head man. 50 years old, wanted a new challenge, was an NFL offensive coordinator, and he wants to get CSU back on top. Lanye Miller out to the 31. You mentioned Fairchild. Well, think about the big shoes he had to fill. Oh, Sonny Lubin. Sonny Lubin. I mean, I mean, yeah. Field is named after yeah, the guy. Yeah, you, you don't want to be the guy to follow the legend. You always want to be the guy who follows the guy. Because the guy who follows the legend always gets the grief. Sonny Lubick, he took CSU to six conference titles, nine bowl games, and a real gentleman. And, and Fairchild was quick to mention what a wonderful person Sonny Lubick is. Still lives back in Fort Collins, has his steakhouse, and he's a good friend of Fairchild's. And as Harding was taken down right away, by uh, Jake Galusha. Yeah, G Galusha was part of the new approach by Larry Kerr on second down, bringing run blitzes. You see him come up in the middle. They bring their safeties inside. Galusha gets in there, makes the play, creating the third down. And now uncertainty for Fresno State because the last time you had to throw the ball, you threw a pick to the defensive lineman. So a third and eight. And Fresno State has gotten away from their comfort zone of the power running and been put into a couple of these pressure situations. What will they come up with here? Probably crossing routes. They used to do that pretty well early in the season. Grand Stater to the guy that he thinks is most reliable, Bear Pasco. But it goes incomplete as the pressure came once again from the freshman All-American, Michael Sisson. It looked like a tip ball there. Well, they've gone to a lot more pressure. They've gotten Sisson involved. You see him on the right side coming in. He gets there, gets some pressure on the quarterback, Grand Stater, and that ball looked like it was tipped. And once again, Square with trouble fielding that punt. He looks like he put a knee down when he went to gather the ball again. He has struggled three times today 
as Alex Square and fielding punts. He's misjudged everything. It started with the first one when he didn't get underneath it, and then he drifted to the second one. And it's like playing baseball. You can't drift to the ball. You have to get there and get settled and move into it. Just a two-point game and CSU with the ball when we return. And college football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by the Albuquerque Convention and Visitors Bureau and Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Good view from University Stadium here in Albuquerque. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessitor. Just over eight minutes to go. Colorado State with the ball back. Trailing just by two. They missed a two-point conversion moments ago that would have tied the game. Gartrell Johnson's been running hard all day long. This time, Kyle Knox gets to him on the edge. One of the treats of the bowl season is you get to see guys who are likely to be NFL bound. And we've got some in this ball game. Bear Pasco rated the number eight tight end by our Todd McShay. Brand Stater, you know, likely to be a fifth round pick or so. We've seen him tonight as well. And then probably the guy who's been the most impressive as a prospect is Corey Sperry. And he's kind of under the radar because folks didn't see him last year with that ACL he had. But he is really a spectacular looking athlete. Made a big catch just before the half to make this a one point game. Gartrell Johnson fighting for yardage out to the 31. You, That'll bring up a third down and six. You, you think about Sperry and what he can bring you know, to the NFL. A guy who can play tight end and can be an H-back, a move guy, a guy you can spread out with his size at 6'6", 250. His ability to make plays in the end zone. He's going to be one of those guys that really stands out, I think, when you get to the NFL combine in the line. Was able to overcome a torn ACL. <laughs> to get back in the mix. Ferris now. Cranking it up on third and six. Greer holds it in. He gets loose to the end zone. The Rams take the lead. 69-yard touchdown catch. Ray Sean Greer. Isolation here. This is simply a mistimed jump. Davis is in great position to make a play. He mistimes his jump, swipes at the ball, misses it, and great concentration by Rayshon Greer to come up with it. Jason Smith tags it on. And how quickly things can change. Billy Ferris to Ray Sean Greer. 33 28, Colorado State on top. Capital One Bowl Week, December 20th through January 3rd on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. Boise State is undefeated in the regular season for the third time in five years. And now the Broncos are gearing up for their seventh straight bowl appearance. They face number 11 TCU. The Horned Frogs boast the nation's second-ranked defense. It's the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, Tuesday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Well, Reese and the guys will have a good one there. Mountain West versus WAC, and we've got a great one here between those two conferences this has been a wildly entertaining game and Colorado State just took their first lead on a 69 yard touchdown catch by Ray Sean Greer and Rod coming into the season he had never even had a pass thrown his way and he's an all conference star here with the Rams in 2008 well test anytime you take your free safety out of the middle you are rolling the dice take a look here and see what happens watch what happens when you move your safety and you see the wide open field that billy ferris is looking at now he's got great protection no worries and he's got all this so he knows he can throw the football out there and let his receiver run to it and that's exactly what greer does and then a misplayed jump by Davis, that's all she wrote. But you take your safety out of the middle, and you are rolling the dice. 
So seven minutes to go. What do you want to see out of Fresno State if you're a Bulldog supporter here, Rod? Patience. Moore. Marlon Moore makes a nifty move and has a good gainer for a first down. 14 yards, Brand Stater to yes. Moore. And, and that's an example of patience. You don't have to throw the ball 30 yards down the field. Yes, you need something on first down. So a nice little three-step pass to a guy who can run with the ball after the catch is a good thing to do. That's what Moore gets you right now, and now you have a little confidence. And you've got everything open now. Now you can throw it short. Now you can go to your running game. Miller, the lone back. Miller, not much running room at all. Sisson ended up on him, but he was also tripped up up front. John Clark got into the mix. And Sisson has been really active in the second half. They've done a nice job of making sure that they get him involved. Now, he gets off the block there by Bear Pasco, who's a big guy, you know, 260, but he gets off that block and makes a play. Sisson stretches out to barely 5'10", just over 200 pounds, but he gets after the ball. He is fast, he is fun to be around, just loves to play the game. Now here's Big Bear, and Bear Pasco has it just short of a first down. The 260-pounder who takes part in calf roping as a hobby. Uh, he's, a, he's a big boy. He's one of the prospects we talked about. He was considered to be kind of a third-round pick last year if he'd come out. Still in that range. You know, he's going to be a, a tight end who's on the line of scrimmage in the NFL who blocks and can catch in the red zone inside the 20, but he's not going to be a speed burner. He grew up on a cattle ranch. He's a whole lot of beef out there. And just taking it forward is Brandstater. And, and picking up the first down for Fresno State. Now, we know that in the second half of this game, Colorado State defensively, they've gone to pressure on first down and pressure on second down. They've gone with run blitzes to try and make sure they get the second and long situation. So, Fresno State has to counter that. They assume they cannot run on first down, which is why you're going to see three-step quick passes, maybe a screen pass, something wide, because they feel they cannot run inside against those run blitzes. We are under five minutes. Colorado State, who had reached a point in this game where you said, all right, they need a stop, they need a spark. Now with the lead, flag comes in here. Delay of game, offense, five yards, remains first down. Yeah, yeah, inexcusable. You get a first down, that, that's inexcusable. You ought to be able to get your play, get in and get going. That's a stop right there. Yeah, now you've got first and 15. Senior quarterback, too. Yeah, right? yeah you, you can't have that. Yeah, this is critical time. You've got to be clean and efficient. Now, Brand Stater's a smart guy. We've gotten to know him well. Graduated the summer before his junior season. Been working on his master's past couple of years. But at this point in this game, with these pressure spots, no room for error. So now, three by one's the formation. Gets it to Marlon Moore. And he stepped back into the defensive pressure, so that goes for a loss of three as Michael Sisson, once again the freshman All-American all over the place. Well, you see what happened. You have that penalty, and now a first and 15. Colorado State goes to their nickel package, five defensive backs, and they tell Sisson, you play in space and run around. And now he can make a play. So now you've got second and really long, and you're playing into the hands of the defense. And Sisson is going to be free to roam around. So is Brewer. Hand off to Harding. He does have blockers out in front. Harding, missed tackle, trying to get to the edge. He had one more man to beat if he was going to get extra yardage, but he couldn't get around Nick Avenir. So a nine yard gain by Harding. Yeah, and you know, we talked about Sisson being free. Well, he runs right by this play. I mean, he doesn't see the reverse coming right there. He runs right by it. It was lined up for him to make the play. He ran right by the reverse. So it's a third and ten. As the clock heads towards the three-minute mark. I think you're thinking two plays. I don't think you have to do anything other than you got to think two plays. Pass go in motion. Grand Stater pressure. 
Got it to a 0 2 2, but incomplete, so it'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, you see, I didn't think you needed to get all of it on third down here. Tommy Hill with the pressure there. He's the guy who came up with the big interception. Yeah, you know, Brent Stater is not at his best when he's rolling out. He throws better in the pocket. You know, you, now you punt the ball. Boy, you are really in a tough spot. I thought you needed to go for it here. Two plays, get closer, try it on fourth down, because you may not get this football back the way this team's been running the football. Pat Hill making a decision to punt here. 2.51. Takes a bounce inside the 20. And Colorado State will have the opportunity to put this game away. Will Dan Brown's defense step up? We will see when we return. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessitore. Welcome back to the New Mexico Bowl. Colorado State. Trying to come up with a big win. Hey, just throw your remote control in the garbage. Just keep it right here for the next few days because it's football straight through. And Monday night, NFC North Bell, Packers, Bears, Soldier Field, the great rivalry, 8.30 Eastern. And coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS at 7 Eastern. I have no, no problem with tossing the remote for that. <laughs> no, no. As long as it's football, <laughs> you'll uh, wallpaper your house with it. Well, time has come for defensive coordinator Dan Brown. See if his Bulldogs can get a big stop here. Colorado State going back to Gartrell Johnson. Good run there. If you missed it earlier, Dan Brown, who has been with Pat Hill as a dear friend and his defensive coordinator, part of this program for 12 years. They have told us that this is his last game. He's been battling brain cancer so courageously for the past couple of years. His wife, Mindy, has been by his side in the box and pregame we just watched as coach after coach coach Fairchild and player after player would come up and just want to shake Dan Brown's hands he's been an inspiration and I mean we all respect him so much just the way he's handled this situation he doesn't want all this he's a humble modest man but this is it and here goes Gartrell Johnson on a day where he has been shining bright Johnson all the way in 77 yards for the senior Colorado State took advantage of the golden opportunity and put this game away well how appropriate is that he gets a great block out there one right there easy hole for him to get into they've been doing this all day Long. The great blocking by Puanga, 36 who led the way, and then the speed that we didn't think we'd see out of him hasn't shown much of it. Ran away at the end there to get the touchdown. A tremendous day. Scarlett Johnson, just the focal point of this offense, an unreal day of what he's done 279 yards on the ground another 90 through the air how's that for a way to close out your college career 279 and 90 and soon the new mexico bowl trophy that's made out of zia pueblo pottery and they said yesterday when we were at the luncheon guys listen if you win this thing be careful it's original artwork yeah. it can break <laughs> hey put it in the hands of gartrell johnson nobody's touching it he'll run away with it well in order to get that trophy we thought johnson had to get somewhere north of 130 yards didn't think it'd be 280. that is one of the most unique trophies in all of college sports zia pueblo a uh, Indian tribe from New Mexico. You saw their symbol on there as well as the, the teams that take part in the game. In fact, the most valuable player trophies are crafted from traditional leather shields. And I can just about guarantee you that Gartrell Johnson's going to have himself a leather shield. Do you think of anybody else who's more deserving? 279 yards on the ground, 90 receiving, 40 to 28. Evans. 
a shot Evans trying to get free and he's chipped out of bounds there at about the 37 yard line what a way to finish up the first year head coach Steve Fairchild this year this is a team that was trying to find themselves early on lost in the rivalry game to Colorado had to beat Sacramento State by a last second field goal but here they are now closing strong with the win against New Mexico the win at Wyoming and here against a Fresno State team that was top 25 when the year began Rod and a team that was thought of as a legitimate BCS buster early on uh, I think you're right I mean what they've done here particularly in the second half is amazing I mean it all started right before halftime with that gamble to get the touchdown pass to Corey Sperry Grand Stater and now he is able to find a zero two two. I mean, talk about a swing in momentum. Colorado State had a 20 unanswered points by them after the pick by Tommy Hill got them going. Gartrell Johnson sealed that drive with the touchdown and then a bomb to Ray Sean Greer. All those things part of a 20 unanswered point string by Colorado State. Offense, five yard penalty remains first down. Bear Pasco finds tight end and Pat Hill. Well, this isn't the way that it was drawn up back in August. It has been a year where they've had injuries and circumstances, and a lot of things work against them. But here today, a determined Colorado State team in the fourth quarter working against them as Harding is taken down by Curtis Cornelson. Well, they need to really work efficiently. And the obvious deal is to try to get a touchdown and an onside kick. It is day one of Capital One Bowl Week, and it will continue tonight with the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl. Going to listen to Mike Patrick, Todd Blackledge, and Holly Rhodes. And that I'm looking forward to this one. Number 16 BYU taking on Arizona in the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week tonight at 8 Eastern. BYU, they just stamped themselves in that Las oh, Vegas Bowl yeah. Yeah, for four <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, non-conference games and bowl season, that's where conferences make their reputation. And the Mountain West really made a strong statement in the non-conference season. Now, can they do it in the bowl season? Utah, of course, unbeaten. DCS team. Grand Stater. Able to get it free. And stretching out was a zero two two. And this is really, you know, you can talk about the top of conferences. We all know about Boise State unbeaten on top of the WAC and Utah on top of the Mountain West. But how about a guy like Steve Fairchild taking a team like this, Colorado State, and improving as the year goes on and defeating a team from the WAC who was thought of as the team that was going to be in play this year. And look at what they've done. 600 plus yards of offense today. Third and seven now for Grand Stater. Pressure comes from both sides. Gets it to Evans and Evans is inside the 10 yard line. Well, they need to really hurry. They have a couple of timeouts. They've got to get the ball in the end zone relatively quickly and then get an onside kick. You know remarkably this ends up being one of the best looks we've seen out of them since their first drive of this second half. The offense has been lingering. And now all of a sudden, when it becomes a 12-point game, pressure's on and time's running out, Grand Stater gets some flow going. Well, Colorado State's playing a little bit looser. Yep. Getting some holes there. Trying to prevent the deep, quick score. So they don't mind giving up a little bit of yardage. But Larry Kerr says that a little bit as one thing. Give it up 25 30. That's a whole nother story, guys. Keep the ball in front. Gartrell Johnson had the 77 yard touchdown run moments ago to push this margin to 12. Tom Brand Stater, you know, everybody wants to go out a winner. Your senior year, bowl game, doesn't matter what happened over the course of the past few months. Seven and five, six and six, erase it. Want to be a winner. They've got the matchup on the bottom. A year two two against a smaller corner over there. Gerald Thomas is only about five eight five nine. A year two two is almost six three. A year two two now in motion, coming back 
to that near side. Grandstater goes over the middle and gets it complete for the score to Ryan Skidmore. The big target tight end, the redshirt freshman, with the touchdown. Yeah, he so just gets, Fresno State is still alive. Yeah, he gets inside. A big body guy, 6'5", 240, who gets inside. When he gets inside like that, he can shield you. Easy throw right there. You can't let a big tight end get inside like that. That's exactly what happens. Pagnata could not prevent him from getting inside. Wrestling adds the extra point. So now 55 seconds to go. Fresno State still with two timeouts and trailing by five. Well, no secret as to what's coming. You have to do the onside kick. The only question is, what kind of onside kick? Do you kick it up high and hope your guy can get it? Do you drill it right at someone and hope to get a ricochet? But the onside kick is coming. You get that, then you have a shot. A couple of timeouts left. Colorado State is not, by any stretch of the imagination, home free here. What a change in disposition. Just moments ago, Gartrell Johnson with the 77-yard touchdown run. And Colorado State felt that they had put this game away, just play a little bit of defense and enjoy a victory. But now they will face their own pressure moment with the hands team out and Gessling, yeah. the yeah. kicker for Fresno. Well, the whole discussion, really, for Colorado State is how you deal with the ball that's coming. If it's a ball that's that's popped up, how you handle it. You've practiced this a thousand times. When a line drive is kicked right at you, how do you handle it? Well, you let it go through, let one of the back guys get it. You know, you're not supposed to take any chances with the ball up front that will ricochet off of you. So they're going over those things. And Fresno State, they clearly understand which way they want to kick and how they want to kick it. I always thought the hardest thing to address was that line drive, that, that, that hard ball right at you because it could take a, a wicked bounce. So here it comes off the toe of Gessling. They're going to pop it up. There's the bounce. And hauling it in are the Rams. As Kyle Bell, how fitting is that? That Kyle Bell, the senior running back, who was the star recruit, the best running back in the history of Colorado high school football, and then the star running back for the Rams early in his career, tore his ACL, and has just had to be a team player since that moment. And he corrals it. Hey, he did a great job coming up to get the ball in the air. It, it was a kick that never had a chance. They never got the chance for the second bounce or a line drive directly at somebody. That ball was as easy an onside kick to recover as you're going to find in college football. Now Gartrell Johnson just doing his thing. And he has done it all day long, Rod. Well, clearly he has. He started off early with a big 57-yard run and then just carried the ball the rest of the day, including catching the ball out of the backfield, really being the focal point of the offense. 90 yards catching, 279, rushing the ball until that last carry there and sealing the game with his 77-yard touchdown run just a few plays ago. Gartrell Johnson is the player of the game brought to you by Capital One. 285 rushing yards, another 90 receiving. A couple of touchdowns, including the 77-yarder that pushed the margin to 40 to 28. He is a senior from Miami Springs High School. What a, what a career. He talked about Kyle Bell and what he did when he was a sophomore at Colorado State. Well, Gartrell Johnson had to beat Bell out twice. He had to beat him out under the Sunny Lubick staff. And then when Fairchild came in, he had to prove himself all over and beat Bell out again. And he did. Offensive coordinator Greg Peterson told us, he said, you know what I like best about him? Every day it comes to practice. He just brings his hard hat and his lunch pail, and he delivers. And he delivered today in a big way, the second best rushing game in the history of Colorado State. And that is.
is heading the way of first year head coach Steve Fairchild. That Zeal Pueblo Pottery Championship trophy for winning the New Mexico Bowl. Certainly a tremendous first season for Fairchild. A winning season for these seniors at Colorado State who had four seasons of losing records. They get a victory, a 7-6 and six finish. They won their last three games to get that record. You know, that scene you see on the field right there, Rod, that looks like a team and a program that is heading in the right direction where the fans, the players, the coaches, the administration, they can feel it. Steve Fairchild. His third stint at CSU. He was a quarterback. He was an assistant coach under Sonny Lubick. And now his first year as the head coach. And they win the New Mexico Bowl in sensational season. A sensational style in that fourth quarter. What a rally it was. Uh, what a tremendous comeback for them. They had 20 unanswered points. They had a phenomenal performance out of Gartrell Johnson. They made the big throw, the big catch when they needed to. And this program certainly has come a long way from where they were last season. And of course, for Fresno State, a disappointing season, such high hopes. Drop it here to Colorado State. Tommy Hill had the big interception that set up the game changer. Gartrell Johnson just ran, ran, and ran all day. 279 yards. And our final score of the third ever New Mexico Bowl. Colorado State 40, Fresno State 35. For more on this game, you can tune into ESPN News. Rod and I will have a post-game extra coming up at the top of the hour here on ESPN. It's Holiday Hoops, Syracuse, and Memphis. For Rod Gilmore and an entire crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. All right, Joe, Rod.